Hello everybody, how are you? Welcome back. Today I have one of my very favourite RCs, a car which is criminally underused on this channel. I mean, I don't know why. I never use it and I don't know why. Um, my Tamiya TT01 Type E, which I've had for many years. I've had it since, I think I built it in 2011. Pretty sure it was 2011. And in those nine years, you can count on one hand how many times I've serviced it. Actually, you can count on no hands how many times I've serviced it. I've never serviced it. Um, yeah, it's kind of due a little bit of TLC. Um, this has been one of my most reliable and dependable RCs. It's, it's broken a few times from heavy impacts, but like the Mad Rat, it has never failed me. Um, I really, really like this, this car. Um, one of the things I like about it is it's very humble. You know, TT ones are very humble cars. They're not particularly good. They're not greatly advanced or anything. They're just dependable, strong, resilient tuning cars. But this one has been upgraded several times, and now it's it's a really good handling little car. So what's it had? This has had a combination of yeah racing and three racing parts. Now I'm going to try and remember which way around each one is, but I can't really remember. But we'll see. I think the center shaft, you see you see it in there, the blue anodized center shaft, the alloy center shaft, is yeah racing as an upgraded center shaft. Uh, the reason I got that is because the standard plastic one has got so much flex in it, even with a very mild motor, like, like the 27 turn uh, Revenge of the Monster Pro, not even the great one that I've got, just a normal Revenge of the Monster Pro, and uh, was causing the, the, the shaft to flex so much it was slapping off the chassis, you could hear it was snap, 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 snap. So I needed to get that more strong upgraded one. So that's what I did. I did also initially have the matching Yeah Racing um, dog bone drive shafts, but they've been replaced now. It has three racing, what they call the swing shafts. Essentially, they are CV drive shafts. Are they, I believe, front and rear? Yes, front and rear, CV steel drive shafts. And those are because, um, the reason I got them is because I've got the three racing ball bearing upgraded ball bearing differentials now i know gear differentials are strong the ball differentials but the standard tamiya ones are not so it's got the up upgraded ball differentials so it's running at least it, it was running very smooth compared to compared to standard uh, also full bearing kit again ni nice nice running smooth compared to standard it has the tamiya uh, own uh i believe there's tamiya own pretty sure they are um adjustable camber links front and rear so you can adjust the camber front and rear in this car which is not an option um when it's out of the box uh, what else has it had done to it what else has it done to it? oh yeah the shock absorbers you may notice these are completely different shock absorbers these are schumacher shocks i believe um i've had these for oh i don't even know how long they were i believe second hand when i was racing back in 2003 so i don't know maybe they were new but they're very old um but they don't leak or anything they've been really good Pretty sure the Schumacher, um, but those are probably running on air now because they've never been serviced. And the front, oh, this feels awful. The back not so much. The back still has it's not great, but the front is. Ugh, I just I, I can't convey how awful that feels. <laughs> Maybe I can, but yeah, oh, that's not good. So anything else? I don't think there's any other upgrades on it. Uh, in terms of spec, it's using a 40 megahertz uh, system, high tech system, same as I used to use on my Lossy Triple XS. Um, this is an MRT model racing technology VX Sport speed control, which basically means this has this is a zero motor limit speed control. You can take any brush motor whatsoever, and it will run it. It's also fully waterproof, and it has a launch control. Um, up until yesterday. This car was running this motor. I've only ran it a few times with this motor. It wasn't consistently running this one, but this is a peak racing vantage. Six turn triple. <laughs> Overkill. Like you wouldn't believe. Overkill. Um, some of the uh, longer standing uh, subscribers to this channel will have seen this car running this six turn triple when it was racing against Matthew's HPI Blitz. Now, I just want to say, 
at some point, now I'm not sure when this video and this thing, how they how, how they're related to each other chronologically, but at some point I had a charger which was playing up and then it failed, right? Now I don't know if that's, I don't know when it was, like I say, in, in, in relation to the video that we filmed the Blitz, but I can tell you right now that that car that you saw, the, this car running on that video was not as fast as it was when I ran it yesterday. Nowhere near as fast. Um, it looked quick, but it wasn't like, wow! And uh, this yesterday really was, so maybe yeah, maybe the, the batteries weren't fully charged properly or balanced properly or whatever when you saw it. It was quick, but it wasn't ridiculous. Yesterday, when I used it with Matthew, Matthew had his charisma. We went to a local um, primary school playground because obviously the schools are shut right now. Um, I figured a primary school playground would be a, a good place for something, you know, a big, wide, open, smooth piece of tarmac, which it was, but the problem was it was filthy. I mean, it was really stones and gravel everywhere, so it was just not very good. Um, this was undrivable, utterly undrivable. It's so much power spinning out constantly. Not helped by these T27 tyres. Yes, they are absolutely, there's no tread left, but the point is the compound isn't particularly grippy on these things because it was dry, so it, slick tyres would have been fine. Um, they were easily overwhelmed. T27s are just multi-purpose tyres. They're not particularly great. So I've ordered new wheels and tyres. We'll see what they're like. Um, but the motor just was so overkill, it wouldn't go in a straight line. Uh, if you floored it, um, it would spin out. And also, it got so hot that it actually desoldered itself from the speed controller. So that motor, it couldn't stay. It was just too, too powerful. So this is now a 12 turn. I've gone from a 6 turn triple to a 12. It might be a 12 double. I can't remember, I think it may be a, I don't know, but it's a Mark Reinhardt edition. I believe this was when the, he was employed by HPI. Um, but anyway, 12, 12 turn motor, Orion 12 turn, that'll be fine. Um, Matthew was running a 14 turn lossy motor, so there won't be a huge difference there. Not compared to this, I mean, this was just murderous. You'll notice I've got a, a buzzer there, it's a low voltage buzzer for a LiPo because this speed controller doesn't have a voltage cut off. It's, it predates LiPo batteries. It is not LiPo compatible, technically. So, there we are. Really good little car. Handles great now when you don't have this motor in it. Um, and when we first started racing our little indoor club, I ran this. And um, I believe it was basically standard the first year I ran it. I think it had maybe bearings and that was it. I can't remember, but I think it maybe did. Um, and then on the second year it had the, uh, you know, these upgrades. Champion, two years in a row. So, I do like it. It's really good. Yeah, it's really good. Now that's the beauty of Tamiya's and also, well, RC in general, but especially Tamiya's, is taking something quite not very special. Taking something, oh, there's a stone stuck in there. Standard, something not particularly impressive and making it better and upgrading it and making it unique and making it yours. That's what I really like about Tamiya's. I like Tamiya better than I really should because in terms of spec, often out of the box, they're not great, quite often. But for some reason they've got that appeal. Anyway, what are we doing today? Well, I think I should give it a service. Um, I'll, I'll get into the diffs. I did, I did remember later on that they're bald diffs. I was like, oh, Draft. I don't really want to have to deal with ball differentials. It'd be easier if you could just grease up some geared ones. But I'll get the doll, the, the, the doll diffs, the ball diffs out. I'll get them out and uh, give them a clean. And also, I think more importantly, is service these shock absorbers because they're hideous. So, allow me to get started. There it is. Three racing ball differential. Right. Um, I think. Oh. Jeez. Yeah, that's um. That's needing the service. Probably needs new ball bearings, but I don't have any, so it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um. Pretty sure. This arrived. This came uh, in the box or in the packet. Pre-assembled. Pretty sure it did. So, um, I, I don't remember how. I don't remember taking this apart ever. 
I might be wrong. I might be wrong. Um, sorry, but she knows. Ah, it's got a hex screw inside it, so I need to get my Allen key set. I only got my uh, screwdrivers here because normally Tammy are just all crosshead Phillips screws across the board, but obviously not. Well, Tammy is the tree. You get the point. I know another thing is I don't have any kitchen roll. I have to use toilet paper or something. Okay. Pretty dried out. Not completely dried out, but pretty pretty bad. And filthy. Completely filthy. I need to remember the screw head that goes on the end. The teeth end. The smooth end doesn't have the screw head. Okay. Yeah, you can see that. It's it's not particularly clean. It's rather dirty, but um could have been worse. Could have been worse, but it's not too bad. Just needs a bit of a clean up. Again, you knew death balls would be great, but I don't have any. Um The car actually, even though I've had it for many years, um it was running geared for a lot of that time. Um it hasn't done a huge mileage with the ball differential to be honest and most of that was indoors so it should be all right um i'm just wondering if i should get at the uh, thrust washer or not uh, it feels like that's been glued in that out drive to be honest it's not wanting to budge so that'll be fine let me get some loose paper or something clean this up and I've got some, I wonder if I've still got some, I'm pretty sure I've still got some Team Associated Stealth Diff Grease, which would be perfect for this application. Yeah. Wish I had some kitchen roll, but um, I've not been shopping for a little while. Um, screw going shopping right now, it's pain. So, unless I run out of food, I'll be fine. Loo paper will do. It's not ideal, but it'll do. Right, that's everything cleaned up. Um, just apply some, like I say, team associated stealth diff lube, they call it. Put it right on here. Come on. Don't have much left, to be honest. This might be the last differential I can do with it. Possibly. Uh. Behave. Behave. And I'll put some, try to do this on camera, but it's not easy. This here as well, on top, all over the ball bearings. There we go. Don't fall off, don't fall off, don't fall off. Not bad, not bad at all. That feels a lot better already. Let me just nip this back up again. All right. Go work it back and forth a little bit. Yeah. Doesn't feel like a brand new differential. It never will, of course. Well, I might have get new new diff balls, but. More importantly, it's a lot better than it was. Let's work it a little bit. And in terms of inside the diff housing, I don't think I'll use this team associated stuff because I'm just trying to run the gears off the diff itself onto the ring and pinion gear. Um, I'll just use normal grease, I think. That one cleaned out first of all as well. So you've got the gear right in there at the end of the center prop shaft. Just need to clean, clean this all out. I suppose if I'm going to grease it, I kind of need to go and get the grease. Mmm, cold coffee. I'm going to put quite a reasonable amount of grease on this uh, 
it's a very big uh, sort of diff housing on this car so the grease will just go splat on the, on the diff walls, the housing walls, sorry, the diff housing wall, it'll just be like, well that's that then. I'll put a reasonable amount on. I can go overboard, the teeth are quite big, they're quite coarse and um, there's no lack of space and it seals off pretty well so um, I've got no no qualms about absolutely loading it up with grease, that'll be absolutely fine. Put it on the back as well, it slides around. Yeah, fine. Don't get all dirty, don't get all dirty. Oh. Right. Put the plug the drive shafts in, come on, that's awkward. There's one. Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on, would you stop fighting? There we go. No, there we are. Right. Okay. The shock absorber needs to go away. Right. Plug. Drat. Some dirt on the grease there. Okay. Let's hope this goes smoothly. Come on. Go smoothly. You know you want to go smoothly. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that went relatively smoothly. Pretty good. There we go. This is where I find out the disc spins in the wrong direction. No, we're good. We are good. Pretty good. Right. Let me just... Oh. Regardless how careful I am, I always get grease everywhere. Just need to rebuild this now. Right then, that's the rear diff serviced. Oh, so much better. So much better, yes. I did get some grease though on the back of the car. Of course I did. I mean, I've not done it right if I've not got grease everywhere. Which is now obviously a dirt magnet. Not that, I mean, look at the state of it. So, yeah, fine, good. Oh, the shocks are going to be nasty. Now for the front of the car, uh, well, I don't know if you need to take the front bumper off, maybe, find out I suppose, take the shock tower off like normal and then see where we go after that, I will need to um, sound like Kronk from uh, Ember and New Groove, have you seen that film? Probably we start off with soup and then a light salad and see how we feel after that. Right, um, take the shock off and then take the three shock tower screws out and see where it takes us it's got the same design for the bottom of the diff actually I think maybe the diff covers are the same front to rear in this car quite a lot of it is the same front to rear Even the, yeah, the bottom plates, see that on the chassis? Ah, no, there you go, that there is the same as that there. Yeah it is. So, that being said, I don't think I need to take the front bumper off. If I take these two screws, or these three screws out the bottom rather, um, you could bend the bottom plate away just a little bit and that allows the top diff cover to be released so we'll try that sometimes time your designs are really unorthodox right 
Does it work? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Diff cover off. And diff out. There it is. Again, filthy. This one's better than the back one. It is better than the back one. Don't know why that might be. Is it because when you accelerate forward, the car leans back, and so therefore you get slight more load on the back diff, maybe? Could be that. It's the back diff drives slightly harder because it unloads the front slightly when you accelerate, possibly. But anyway, the point is the back, the front one feels a bit better. Anyway, uh, that's pretty. Yeah, again, it's um, it's rather filthy. It's not again. It's not bad. It's not horrific considering this has been run like this for years. But you know, small service will always help. First things first, clean it up. All right, nice and clean. Just need to uh, apply the stealth diff loop again. And repeat what I did for the front of the car. There we are then, diffs serviced. Lovely. Look at the state of those shock absorbers. They're supposed to be red. Look at them. Also, look at the state of my hands. If you'll excuse me. I think I'll wash them. Right, let's have a look at these shock absorbers then, shall we? Take them off and see what's what. I'm guessing that there's not very much oil in each of them, um, or even if there there is oil, um, there'll probably be you know dirty oil by now. And there's only so long that the oil could stay clean inside a shock absorber. Uh, let's have a look. I don't know why I bothered washing my hands, look, it's <laughs> straight away. Oh well. Right. Obviously I'll give them a clean up before they get reassembled. Look at all the gunk. Look. Big load of gunk. Filthy things. Filthy, filthy. Again, if they're filthy, it would suggest that they're leaking because dirt sticks to the oil or, or to grease or whatever but at the same time the entire car is filthy so and it, it's going to be if it's gone this long without a service so um, that might not actually mean anything in this case there you are though look at that they clean up pretty well don't they not bad at all oh Yeah. Right, I'm going to take all four of them off and then we'll see how much oil each of them has. Right then, you join me at the sink. Here we have the back left shock absorber. Now, I think these shocks have got an unusual design where you unscrew the bottom, I believe, rather than the top. I think the I think the, the uh, alloy is all one piece, I believe. Yeah, pretty sure that's the case. So I'll just um, see if I can unscrew it from the bottom here. Yeah, very unusual design, these ones. Sorry about the lighting, not very good over here. So what do we have? What do we have? Wow. <laughs> wow. Literally nothing. Can you see in there? No, you can't. That is dry. That is a dry shock absorber. Wow. It hints that it's maybe had oil at one point in its life, but that's a dry casing. That's a dry shell. That's not going to help the handling any, is it? <laughs> wow. Okay. So the back left was utterly dry. Completely dry. Back right. Oh yeah, this way.
Do we have oil? Do we have oil? No. No, we don't. Maybe slightly more of a suggestion of it than the other one, but um, yeah, you see the piston's actually, you probably can't see, but the piston's actually wet on this one. The piston was bone dry on the other one, so yeah, again, hints that there was oil in it once, but uh, it's been a long time coming. It's clean inside though, which is good. But then I, I, again, this is mostly raced indoors, this car it hasn't had that much outdoor use really, considering how long I've had it, so hardly surprising. So, two back shock absorbers were empty. Front right shock absorber. Bear in mind the front felt worse than the back. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, there is a very small amount, there we go, very small amount of oil in there. Pretty dirty though. Not, no, actually not too bad, not too bad, but slightly Discol or slightly coloured rather than discoloured, it should be clear, um, but it wasn't, so slightly dirty, nothing too bad, but not very much in it, a small splash in it, not going to be enough for any sort of damping, so not great, and uh, we have the front left. Yeah, again, a hint of oil, but not enough to pour. Um, probably the same as the the back one there, yeah. Not great. So none of the shock absorbers were particularly good state at all. Hardly surprising. So there we are, all serviced and all done. It feels it feels much better, but it doesn't feel great at the front still. I'm guessing it's because of the steering link setup. Um, basically, you've got the links, and you don't have a ball end on each link. There's no ball ends. It's just Sleeved on, then there's a post, and it sort of has to move up like that, and you sort of bend it almost. It's not a great setup at all. Um, I'm sure there'll be an aftermarket. Well, I mean, there, are, there almost certainly will be, even without looking, there will be, um, which would sort out that a lot. It would help the suspension work better because there won't be any binding. So I'll maybe look at the price of them and, you know, get that sorted. But I don't think, I, I think I'd rather not have anodized steering bits. We'll see. We'll see. If there's no other option, I suppose it could match the. Uh, Center prop shaft or the center shaft. I keep calling it a prop shaft. Um, no, so it is a prop shaft technically. But anyway, um, yeah, we'll, we'll work that now. But here we are. It's all ready, ready to go. It's all sorted. Let's switch this on. You can still hear that? That's the uh, the sh the prop shaft has actually got a, a bend in it. It wobbles. Uh, it's not completely true anymore. Probably because the power of uh, this six-turn motor, so it does go and flaps around. It's horrible. But the diffs and the bearings sound really nice until it until it starts to flap around. Sounds pretty sweet. So that's fine. Earlier on I mentioned, well I think I said traction control, but I meant launch control. This speed controller has a launch control. Actually, you know what, I'll demonstrate it rather than to tell you. I don't actually understand it though, because there's no feedback on this. There's no feedback. It's not like a, a sensored brushless system where you have the, the sensor cable going back, so there's a feedback loop. There's none of that here. There's only the motor cable, so I don't really know how that launch control works. But, basically if you just accelerate, no launch control. But if I hold this stick back into full brake, there's no reverse, until it beeps, then it arms the launch control. The next time you accelerate, it launches with launch control. If you listen. There you are, and now if I launch it, that would be launch control. Now, again, I don't know how that works because there's no feedback. However, I also have never used that in competition, I mean, I've ran in our little club with this speed controller, but I never use it in competition. I've never really seen it in action in a competitive level. But Alan from Tame Models says that he knew people that ran this, especially outdoors when it was wet and slippery, because uh, it's a waterproof speed controller, and that wasn't that common back then, especially one with no motor limit. Um, they would use this, they would switch to this one when it was raining, or it had been raining and the track was wet. 
He said that actually it genuinely made a difference and people were gaining several places off the grid just because of the launch control. So it obviously works. But there we are then. A TT-01 is serviced. It actually sounds, apart from the flapping around prop shaft, I might replace it. We'll see. I mean, it depends on the cost of it. If it's dirt cheap, I'll maybe get a replacement one. It does flap around and it makes a horrible racket. And actually, as you heard on sort of half throttle, it was really nice and smooth sounding. Obviously, the service, the diffs has helped a lot. It sounds great. The bearings are obviously still good as well. They, they still feel good. So, yeah, pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. And with the suspension working properly, I'll get the steering sorted because, yeah, that does bind up. I can actually feel it. Now the shocks are still are serviced and they're perfect and they're, there's no bubbles or anything in them. You can still feel there's a bit of binding. It's got to be that steering setup because everything else has, you know, a pivot point, a proper pivot point, but they don't. So, yeah, I'll work on that. But there we are. One of my most basic but most fun and enjoyable RCs. TT-01. TT-01E. Warning. Rotating parts. I don't have a... Let's see that. I don't have the switch. Alright guys, thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Forgot to say, filled it with TLR 50 weight shock oil because the springs are quite stiff. Bye.